increasing appetite and there's more money flowing from the Indian households to the Indian equity markets too. The value of shares and debentures held by households has jumped over a thousand percent in the past decade. Mutual funds, assets under management have also vaulted 500 percent in this decade. The Indian equity market has added 31 million investors in 2023. Digitization of financial systems and deeper bank penetration is transforming people's savings behavior, mirroring preference towards more return yielding financial assets. To talk to us here on the Rising Bharat platform about the phenomenal transformation and democratization of the Indian capital markets, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to welcome here on the stage Madhavi Puri Bud, Chairperson of the Securities Exchange Board of India, the Chairperson of our market regulator, Sebi. gentlemen. Uh, I must admit uh, I'm a little nervous here today because Shireen has asked me to deliver an address which is supposed to be 25 minutes long and I'm really worried because at the best of times uh, you know five minutes ten minutes is good but to the best and brightest minds in the country sitting here today I can't think how I can keep you engaged for 25 minutes, but I shall try. So the strategy is to share with you some stories uh, along the way in terms of what is happening in our capital markets. So as we think about democratization of the capital markets, to me, the question that starts right at the beginning is, what do we understand by democratization? And in order to share the story of many years ago. It's a story about one Mr. Murthy. Oops. Go back. Hmm. Okay, here's Mr. Murthy. He was a real person, Mr. Murthy, in Hyderabad. Looked pretty much like this. This was the early days of online share trading. And when I met this gentleman, he was a small trader sitting in Hyderabad. We spoke partly in English, partly in Telugu. And he said that he was extremely delighted with online share trading. And when I asked him why was this the case, he had two very simple things to say. He said, you know, I like to trade, but I trade very small amounts. So the subbroker doesn't really care much about me and I have to keep pestering him and following up again and again and he just often doesn't even take my phone call. And if it's a really volatile day, though there's no chance of my being able to get through to him and all the volatile days I miss the activity in the market because the subbroker simply won't pick up my phone. And he said, Online share trading gives me an equal right, like all the big wig investors, to go and buy and sell my shares. That was the day that I learned what is meant by democratization. We often think only of entry, you know, access to come in. What he taught me was access to get out as well. Because in a large part of any industry, any product or service, there are many people who encourage you to come in. But do you have equal access and as much service from them when you want to go out? So to me, democratization needs to encapsulate not just ease of coming in, but ease of being served right through the life, life cycle of being an investor and indeed the ease of going out. So 
So what is it that has really happened in our markets? I will take you to another story. This story is about Mr. Kamat. Many of you know him. Uh, I've taken his permission to narrate this story. It's not a professional story. It's about Mr. Kamath, the man. Mr. Kamath has household help, and he was really keen that they should participate in the growth of the country, the growth of the markets, and really create wealth for their children and their families. So he wanted to pay them bonuses and part of their salary, invest on their behalf, but he always worried. He said, I'll make the investment on their behalf. But tomorrow when I am not here and they need to be served and they need to exit, who will be there to serve them? They will be lost in this world. Right? His domestic help, his driver, his maid at home, his sweeper, his cleaner. And then one day, we showed him a demo of MF Central. Those of you who are familiar with it, this is unprecedented anywhere in the world. And when I speak at IOSCO, which is our you know, global forum for market regulators, they simply cannot believe that an entire industry, 50 different mutual funds, have come together to say that here is the one place where you will be served through a single window. It's not just about buying through a single window. That everybody does because of their own commercial interest. But to be served through a single window. So if you say I want to change my address and you are holding units in five or six different mutual funds, you upload it once, it automatically goes to all five or six. Whenever you have any service request, you say, I want my account statement, I want my tax statement, I need to give it to somebody, you upload once, it goes to everybody. Single window to be served during your entire life cycle of holding that. Now, this is truly phenomenal. It's not just about the fact that technology enables it. It's about the fact that the entire industry chose to come together and offer this and say, this is not a space where we need to compete. This is a space where we need to collaborate. And that's what creates the democratization. Third story, so Shakti Amma. Many of you may be aware, I am a Unilever wife, so I'm very aware of who Shakti Amma is. So this is the local Kiranawala lady who is in every village of the country. What is our ambition? Our ambition is that just as Shakti Amma is selling these little sachets of everything, and we know the entire story about how the shampoo market in India exploded when it moved from bottles to sachets and people could afford to buy a one rupee sachet or a two rupee sachet of shampoo but could never have afforded to buy a hundred rupee bottle. The market just exploded. So our objective is that in similar vein, we are looking to do sachetization of all our financial products. Again, the industry is coming forward to play such a marvelous role. So at the moment, the mutual fund industry tells us that a 500 rupee per month SIP is profitable for them. While many of them actually offer as low as 100 rupees a month, it is not profitable. They're sort of doing a bit of cross subsidy while they build up volume. We as a regulator know that unless it is viable, it will not be pushed. So we are working very closely with the industry to identify what are all the costs, including some of the regulation-driven costs, which is making this unviable at a 250 rupee SIP. So again, it's something world over. People cannot understand how a three and a half dollar per month investment can be made viable, but it is the magic of digitization. So for me, the journey of democratization is all about the journey of digitization. So hopefully, very soon, we will have Shakti Amma having little sashes of mutual fund units over there, 250 rupees a month top up. The next story is about the red, green, and yellow. As I said, for us, democratization, not just to enter. Sometimes there are disputes. Sometimes consumers have grievances. If you don't have inclusion and democratization of that, you are again letting down your investor. So when we think of democratization, there must be democratization of this as well. At SEBI, we are about to launch on April 
1st. I told them don't do April 1st, it's April Fool's Day. Uh, we are about to launch, uh, you know, Scores 2.0. It's a new version. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, the way the entire workflow of handling consumer investor complaints is completely automated. It is linked to every other system in the market. So for instance, when you go there, in our version 1.0, when an investor went there, he had to register for his complaint and he had to put in his email ID, his phone number, his this, his that, to just register that he wants to put in a complaint. And we asked ourselves, why is he doing that? He's coming here to complain because he's already an investor. So we should be having his data. Why are we asking him to put it again? Right? So we have to make it easy for that person that Mr. Kamath told us he wants to invest on behalf of. So now if he just puts in his PAN number, you all know PAN is essential in our country for being in the market, automatically the system talks to our KRA system and pulls all the data and says, this is your phone number, this is your email ID, this is your address, if this is you, please proceed. So simplifying it to this extent from the start of registration of a complaint to taking it to the end of an online dispute resolution mechanism of arbitration and mediation. The entire process with three levels of escalation for the consumer, for the investor, is something that has now been digitized. And the objective is democratize this thing for them, which is their dispute resolution. If you don't do that, you're just paying lip service to the fact that you allowed them in, but are you serving them in a democratic way? This one is a story of loss. You know, normally when we would think about loss in the markets, you would think somebody lost money in the markets. But for us, this was not that loss. It was about the loss of a dear one. So if this person sat there or was standing there and got the news that his father or his mother passed away and he's just sitting there, that he's just lost his parents, that is grief, that is loss, that is pain. And what we said is, at a time like that, for us to give this investor the runaround and that he cannot claim the assets of his parents is just the most appalling thing possible. So what have we done about it? Again, full credit to the entire market ecosystem. About 50 odd legal heads across the ecosystem sat together, arrived at a common set of documents that they will all accept. And now if a person goes online, and submits one set of transmission documents, debt certificate, etc., across the entire market ecosystem, all mutual funds, all, de all depositories, everything, you get. <laughs> Nobody will ask you for another document. So you have to be, this is what democratization is about, so that it's just easy for people, even at a time like this. And if the regulator cannot empathize with loss, then, of course, we need to have our heads examined. Um, sorry. I do want to quote a few numbers. Shireen mentioned some. I love to quote Nandan. You know, he's the, I would say, the guru for all things digital. And when he highlighted this, you can see the numbers there. The numbers themselves are not important. You know, what we talk about the hockey stick effect at a company level, Imagine this is the hockey stick effect at a ecosystem level. So the entire Indian ecosystem is one. It's not one company outperforming to deliver the hockey stick. It is the entire ecosystem that is able to deliver this. And therefore, you, you know, the whole SEBI eases the know your client process by enabling online KYC use of Aadhaar, etc. And look at the way in which that hockey stick effect is now achieved. And of course, the numbers show up that between, you know, 10 years ago, uh, you know, Nandan presented this last year. So what is the ratio of physical to digital forms? And on the back of this, this, you know, the monthly systematic investment plans have multiplied by 6x. This number has gone up further since then. So it just shows that the hockey stick effect, when you really bring together the spirit of democratization, you can achieve it at an ecosystem level, not just as a company level. Mutual fund story is well known and this is our favorite product for financial inclusion. So if you see the blue line, which is number of unique mutual fund investors, so, you know, deduped for PANs. 
So for 10 years ago, we started with 1 crore. We're now at 4.4 crore. And the actual asset under management was 8 lakh crore, and we're now at 55 lakh crore. So it's just been a huge amount of growth again on the back of this whole democratization. This is my favorite slide. I use it quite often. Um, you know, when we think of the markets, invariably, we all think of the share bazaar, let us say. But we have actually a very vibrant bond market. Now, people do not know this. People do not know this. Uh, so two things I would like to say. Number one, some statistics. While the secondary market in bonds is not very active, and we're doing a bunch of stuff to try and improve that, in terms of the primary market issuance, okay, if you look at the total bonds outstanding today and compare it to the total banking loans to the corporate sector, it amounts to 60%, which means for every 100 rupees that the banking system gives to corporate India, the bond market gives 60 rupees. Most people are not aware of how large that number is. Now, specifically in this slide, what I like to talk about is we are expecting this to grow much more. Because with the inclusion of the Government of India securities in the global indices, right, that's already happened, JP Morgan, Bloomberg indices, we can expect to see a large amount of foreign interest in our Government of India securities. And once the Government of India yield curve is established, investors automatically tend to come into our corporate bonds as well, because then it's you just benchmark off the Government of India yield and add the credit spread. So until you have that yield, People don't have that much interest in corporate bonds. So we should see a good amount of inflow in the corporate bond market. And that's when, as people tell me, now you won't need to have an Indian hero there. So I said, we'll definitely put Akshay Kumar there in the same natty suit. So that's our bond market. Um, some of the things that we are doing, and this is really important, again, from a democratization point of view, one of the things that people used to worry about every time the markets were dislocated, the bond markets, they would say liquidity dries up and, you know, people are stuck. Now, you remember what I said about democratizing not just entry but also exit. Something absolutely sparkling that this government has done, and it's gone relatively unnoticed, I feel sad about it, is something called the backstop facility, which the government has put in place with sovereign guarantee. Think about it. The government has said 30,000 crores of asset purchase program guaranteed by the government of India in the event that there is a stress in the market and the mutual funds, the debt mutual funds are stuck and they don't want to sell at distressed prices in a dislocated market. They have actually sanctioned that guarantee. And what that means is that the fear that some people have that because the markets are not so liquid, Tomorrow, if there's a crisis and the market freezes up, what will happen? Well, the government has stepped forward and actually said, well, we will stand behind the bond market. So this was a very, very important step taken by the government to really facilitate the growth of the bond market and to protect the investors. The second thing which SEBI did was to create a very specialized institution called um, the repo, you know, corporate bond repo, repo clearing corporation. The reason this was important and what this slide is meant to demonstrate is the product was always there in the market. It was not getting used. And we realized that the exchanges were focused on equity. We'll never have the management bandwidth to focus, eat, dream, drink, breathe the bond market. So we created a whole new institution. And we were told, you know, it's very hard to set up a new institution. Yes, it was hard, but it was created. And that, again, was a cooperative effort of the entire mutual fund industry. So, you know, this is, every time I narrate these stories, as I said in ASCO, people cannot believe how much cooperation and collaboration exists in our ecosystem for people to come together to grow the market. So this is an institution, and I'm very proud to say, I believe in February they crossed 10,000 crores of repo on corporate bonds. That's what focus brings. This is one of my favorite products for the future, REITs. Um, I believe that you know, there's just so much latent demand in our country for real estate. And for each of us to own a little bit of that, 
action and that wealth creation and to try and participate in what can potentially be an inflation proof income is so important. Again, we have found that when we shared this vision with the industry and said that in order to retailize, in order to democratize REITs, we need higher levels of disclosure and compliance. I cannot tell you the cooperation we got, and they've all agreed to a much higher level of disclosure and compliance so that the regulator has comfort to really retailize this product. And of course, consequently, we went ahead and announced something called the small and medium REITs, which means that even assets as small as 50 crores, our, otherwise our threshold was 500 crores, so only the big boys were participating. We brought it down to a 50 crore asset and we've reduced the investment size for just folks like you and us and everybody else to be a part of this entire uh, you know, um, area which is set to grow. Our own back of the envelope calculation tells us that over the next 10 to 15 years, the REIT, INVIT, and MUNI bond market will be as large as our equity market today, one time GDP. That is our belief. So where is that growth going to come from? Where is the capital formation going to come from? This is what our belief is, that this little piece of heaven, this little piece of real estate, this little piece of infrastructure, democratized across millions and millions of people, is what is going to create the next one-time GDP market for our country. I think one additional step that we took towards democratization of what we call the issuers, this is all about the investors, now what about the issuers? We recently inaugurated the listing of five NGOs on our social stock exchange. Again, many people told us it's not worked anywhere in the world, why will it work in India, X, Y, Z? And our belief was no. A, we will make it work because we have the technology and we can take it far and wide. And B, we have again faith in our ecosystem which has done so much. And therefore, we actually saw five, uh, com five NGOs listing together very recently last week as the first set of NGOs to list and make available a very transparent and trustworthy ecosystem for people to donate. So that's our social stock exchange in terms of creating um, democratization of issuers. Now even a nonprofit can be an issuer. How do we achieve all this? And I'm often asked this question, and I think the answer is very simple. On the one hand, of course, technology. I mean, there's just no doubt about that. But the second is co-creation. You know, everything we do is co-created with industry. SEBI has always had a very rich tradition of doing very uh, extensive discussion and very rich advisory committees on policy making. The big step we took about a year ago was that we moved that spirit of cooperation and co-creation into standard setting. So we've set up something called Industry Standards Forum, which set down the standards for implementation of SEBI regulations. And the amount of work that has happened in this last, I would say, seven, eight months, and the kind of you know, ease of compliance that has been brought about. So SEBI had to make some changes because when a logical argument was presented to us, obviously we are going to, we are going to listen to it. The industry came up with some brilliant ideas on how to do that. So the entire spirit of co-creation has been extended and democratized. So it's one more form of democratization that the regulator does not have a monopoly on policy making. Regulator also does not have a monopoly on standard making. So this spirit of collaboration and co-creation is one of, I think, the biggest trends of India along with our technology. On the technology, of course, as I said, you know, it's just there for everybody to see and Shireen and I were speaking that you know, many people across the world cannot even understand how we can implement 90-day projects. You know, people say we barely get our terms of reference in place in 90 days and you guys just sort of implement things. So it just comes from, I think, the, the speed, the attitude, the talent. So many of our young people are tech-oriented, quant-oriented. So all of this really is a huge advantage for us as a country. And therefore, with this entire democratization for the investor, for the issuer, for decision-making, for policy-making, all of this together is really wonderful to look at it and say that this market, therefore, is contributing to capital formation for the real economy and that's where 
the driver of growth is going to come from, and at the same time, it is creating wealth in the hands of our citizens. And what a beautiful win-win outcome that is. And that's all thanks to the democratization of the capital markets. Thank you. Thank you, Madhubi ji. Fantastic as ever. And such a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, and thank you for making the time. Really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be a little more generous with your applause, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, uh, I have to request all of you to cooperate with us, and very humbly so, because we are now...